Excellent. Welcome to the Metasploit team demo meeting for June 30th, 2020. Hope folks are doing well and staying cool as we head into July here. Today's meeting will be a tag team effort with our own Spencer McIntyre from the Dharma Initiative Metasploit team uh, hooking us up with the framework content and demos. I'm really excited to get started today. And with that, let's hop on in. Well, thank you very much. Uh, as Pierce uh, introduced me, uh, my name is Spencer McIntyre, and I'm going to be walking through the Metasploit framework uh, community development, what's uh, the newest and uh, greatest that, uh, that has been added. Uh, so the module highlights that we're going to go through here pretty quick. Uh, we have seven brand new uh, RCE modules and two LPEs, uh, the first of which is a uh, Cayenne CMS uh, server RCE that was brought to us uh, by a couple of community contributors, uh, Liquid Worm and Hoodie, which exploits a CVE. Uh, next up is the uh, ZF command, uh, camera, excuse me, uh, blind remote command execution. So this would be executing an operating system command, which are generally more uh, reliable. So a fantastic exploit there. And that was also brought to us by a, a community member, uh, Silas Cutler. Uh, next up was the Arista Restricted Shell Escape. This was an RCE that uh, combined a lower privileged account with a shell escape in order to escape out of an environment and be able to interact with the system uh, remotely. Uh, uh, next is another uh, Cayenne uh, exploit. Uh, this one was a little bit different in that it utilized a SQL injection to remote command execution. Um, this was also brought to us by community members uh, Liquid Worm and Hoodie. Uh, this was interesting because we've started to see a growing trend in utilizing SQL injection to RCE. That's just kind of something that we've seen over the past couple of months. So pretty interesting there. And then uh, the first of our two LPEs uh, was the uh, Galaxy Client Service Privilege Escalation. And that was also brought to us by community member uh, Joe Testa. Then in the next batch, uh, we had an RCE for uh, Trend Microservices uh, by community member uh, Mehet uh, Ince. Sorry if I'm butchering your name there, apologize. Uh, next up was a RCE for the Agent Tesla panel uh, that was uh, brought to us by a community member. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to try to butcher that name as well. I'm very sorry. Yeah, I, I would have no idea how to, how to say that. Um, and then uh, our last RCE was the uh, Inductive Automation Ignition RCE. Um, now, this one was interesting because I believe this one actually came out around uh, Pwn to Own and was involved in that. And that one has a ZDI notice along with it. And then uh, the second of our two local privilege escalations uh, was brought to us by our own uh, Christophe de la Fuente, uh, along with community member Yorick Coaster, and that was for the Cisco AnyConnect. Um, that was a pretty interesting one. I believe that we will have a demo with that. So those are all nine of our new modules. And along with that, we have a couple of enhancements. Uh, community member Hoodie brought to us uh, some new sanity checks for the Shodan API key for one of our auxiliary modules. That way that adds a little bit of uh, extra usability there. And our own Adam Galway uh, added some standardized error logging. Um, it's kind of a direction that we're trying to go in to clean up some of the error logging and make it a little bit easier for our community members to work with the team and get pertinent information so that way we can address issues a little bit more seamlessly and hopefully alleviate some of the frustration there. So that was one of the steps that we have taken. Uh, Will Vu uh, changed some of the ways that the payload selection process takes place uh, so this removes the multi payloads, which are not normally usable uh, within a standard context. Um, and this kind of couples with a previous change that would automatically select a payload when the module is used. And this uh, improved uh, the usage by showing the user what uh, payload would be utilized for an exploit prior to them having to run it. Whereas before it would automatically be selected at exploit time, which is not always desirable. Uh, so this way you know what payload is going to be used before you go ahead and run it. And I myself identified and fixed a bug that was uh, preventing framework users from killing jobs by ID when the job was started by a running auxiliary module in the background. 
Um, so these uh, framework highlights uh, came out of the uh, weekly wrap up that we do. So um, if you're not familiar with Metasploit weekly wrap up, you can find it there on Rapid Seven's blog. And with that, we are going to get right into the demos. The first up of which uh, I believe is Christoph. Uh, Christoph, okay. are you ready? Yes, I am. Fantastic. I am going to pull your video up yep. here. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. So uh, Ignition by Inductive Automation is an integrated software platform for SCADA systems uh, to do cross-platform web-based deployment. Uh, so version from 8 to 8.0.7 contains multiple vulnerabilities that when shared together uh, can lead to remote code execution with system user privileges. So it is a, a pre-owned uh, RCE. Uh, the main ports are TCP 8080, 88, and 8043, uh, sorry, which are used to control the administrative server over HTTP and HTTPS, uh, respectively. It also handles communication between various ignition companies. So here we have the basic options. Uh, we're going to set the remote uh, remote host and the local host for the payload, which is a, a meta predator reverse TCP payload. Uh, verbose because I like it. <laughs> and here are the options. So remote port is 8088, so over HTTP. Uh, I'm going to run the check uh, method, which detect the version, the vulnerable version, and run the, the exploit. Um, Below, you can see a uh, T-shark, so a packet sniffer, just to see what's going on. Uh, you will see the, uh, the payload here. So uh, this uh, attack consists of uh, uh, sending a request to the system gateway API endpoint and invo invoking get diffs action with a specially crafted payload, this payload here. Um, due to an insecure Java deserialization issue, the payload gets decoded by the standard unsafe object input stream. Um, this is a, a Java class. And uh, code execution is achieved by abusing an old version of the Apache Commons Utils library that is used by Ignition. So it is a combination of three vulnerabilities to get uh, privilege escalation. And that's it. I always feel like SCADA modules are a special treat. <laughs> um, this was a this was a pwn to own PR, right? Exactly. Yeah. Nice. So. I love pwn to own time. <laughs> Every time I see them in the queue, I'm like, yes. Thanks, Christoph. That's great. Thank you very much, Christoph. Um, I think we're going to keep you around because I think you have a second demo. Uh, that's right. That's correct. Sure. So uh, the installer component of uh, Cisco AnyConnect secure mobility client for Windows prior to version uh, 4.8.02042 is vulnerable to path traversal. So with this, you can create and override files in arbitrary location with system user privileges. So it is also vulnerable to DLL hijacking. So by combining both vulnerabilities, uh, we get privilege escalation and run arbitrary commands, commands sorry, as the system user. So this is a local exploit. So we need a session. And we have a session already here We're on a Windows 10 target. This is uh, an unprivileged session. Um, so the attack consists of sending a specially crafted IPC request to the TCP port 62522 on the loopback device. So this is where the Cisco agent service is, list, is listening uh, and uh, waiting for incoming uh, commands. <clears throat> and it runs as system. So this will launch VPN downloader.exe. So this binary is used to auto update any connect. So what's going to happen is it, it's going to copy itself to a location we control where we uploaded our custom DLL. 
so uh, debug-help.dll, and this dialog contains our payload. So when VPN downloader gets executed, it will load the DLL and run payload as uh, run the payload as system. So here we are setting the exploit options, uh, the session, local port, and local host uh, for uh, a meta operator reverse TCP payload. We have a check method that uh, pull the version of the AnyConnect uh, um, uh, component, and it is vulnerable. Here, we run the exploit, there we go. We have here our IPC command, the DLL we uploaded, and here the port on which AnyConnect agent is listening. Here we go, system. And this is the same Windows <laughs> with a lot of privileges. Wait, thank you. That was that was like a, a relatively, at least not a super high CVSS uh, vulnerability, right? I want to say it was like six something. Yeah, it was. It was actually a major risk or like not critical. Yeah, and uh, I. I don't really agree with this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's sort of what I was getting at. <laughs> yeah. it, is, polite way. <laughs> it is very easy to exploit. Um, you don't need a lot of, like, it, 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 it's, it's really reliable. So you don't, yeah. um, well, uh, I would rate it as much more important, critical yeah. than, than it is. Yeah, I mean, if you can go from an unprivileged user to, to system, it seems like, yeah, maybe. Maybe not yeah. quite so low. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you, Christoph. And for our third demo, uh, Dean is going to talk about the brand new issue templates that we have added to uh, GitHub. Yeah, so it's not really much of a demo. You sort of can see everything here. Um, so we've updated our issue templates on GitHub. Um, so rather than just having the one general template that everybody would use. We have individual ones for bug reports, requesting documentation, feature suggestions, multi suggestions, questions, and a handy uh, link for anybody who has some Termux issues, which we don't support. Um, and that's really all I want to point out. Um, each of these have individualized um, uh, templates for the type of issue it is. So you have something different under question as you do for bug report, for example, and they're all um, automatically tagged and um, depending on the template. So um, yeah, I just wanted to point out everybody. Absolutely, please send us uh, all of these things, feature suggestions, module suggestions, questions, um, and please do give us all the information that we ask for because it ensures that we can understand the support you need and that you might not be getting and also fix your issue in a timely and efficient manner. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Dean. Uh, those changes are fantastic. And I think they'll go a long way in helping users kind of navigate through the process of opening an issue and alleviate some of that uh, frustration there as well, make that a much more seamless uh, experience. Uh, that is all that we have for framework updates. So I'm going to pass it back to Pierce uh, to give us an attacker KB update. Thanks, everyone. Cool. Thank you, Spencer. And thank you, Christoph and Dean for the demo. Um, yeah, let's talk about Attacker KB or the Attacker Knowledge Base. It's hacker data at community scale. Come come read about what people think people think are really hot vulns or takes. Add your own vulns, add your own takes. Um, upvote, downvote, it's a cool little system. We have uh, some of the team uh, with us today to demo some of the new stuff going into Attacker KB. Uh, first off is Erin Blyweiss. She's going to show off badge notifications. Okay, so this is a feature that is coming soon to an attacker KB near you. It is not yet live, but hopefully will be very soon. And the idea is we wanted to add some notifications to the site to let you know um, if you've earned either one of these uh, badges up here that tells you kind of uh, what threshold you've reached in terms of how many assessments you've submitted, or this trophy down here that indicates your rank on the leaderboard. Um, this rank right here. So they appear 
or in the past, they've appeared here on your profile page and here next to your assessment, which is still true. Um, if you look at um, my current profile page, I've submitted nine assessments, so I'm very close to the threshold of 10. One more should get me there. I currently have the badge for five. So I'm going to swap over, um, add an assessment. Hello, this is a vol. Submit. And when I refresh the page and scroll up to the top, I have a little alert here that tells me, hey, you've earned a badge for submitting 10 assessments. And if I go back to my profile page and refresh, that, that should change to 10. And that is working as expected. I'm going to share my other browser window now and show you Oops. Okay, I think that worked. Uh, show you the same thing for the leaderboard. So here I'm fourth place on the leaderboard. I have a score of 38 and I'm one point behind uh, Jacob here. So hopefully adding one more assessment will bump me up. Uh, go over here. This is also a bulb. Submit. And I get a notification up here telling me, hey, now you've earned a badge for moving up to third place on the leaderboard. Click that, it'll take you to the leaderboard and show you that I'm now in third place. So hopefully this is some uh, extra reward and incentive for our contributors on the site. And um, like I said, not quite yet live, but hopefully very soon. Any questions on notifications? Yeah, sorry, I have one question. Yep. Uh, where do you go if you click the notification? Does it, where does it take you? To take you to the profile page? This one takes you to the leaderboard. The other one should take you to the profile page. I realized right before this demo that I forgot to actually implement that, which is why I didn't okay. show it, but that's the intent. Gotcha, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. The side benefits of doing a demo. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, this is super cool. It's an, you know, it's an incentivized, you know, quality assessments um, will be rewarded with, with some badges and achievements and notifications of such. Um, cool. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. James is going to demo the auto watch topics. So this one was actually implemented by Matthew Kino. Um, he's at a training this week, so he isn't able to demo it himself. But um, it's a good feature, so I wanted to make sure that everybody got to see it. So um, he let me demo it on his behalf. Um, so if you're not familiar, we added a couple months ago the ability to watch a topic in Attacker KB. And what this does is um, when you're watching a topic, you'll get notified of any events that happen on the topic. If a new assessment gets created, if um, somebody comments on an assessment, um, basically anything uh, that goes on here if the topic gets updated. Um, this feature makes it so instead of having to manually click the watch topic up here, it just auto watches it for you when you whenever you interact with the topic. So. You can see I'm not watching it. I'll refresh just to verify that I'm not watching it. I'm going to come down here and make a comment on Brent's uh, assessment. Um, and now you'll see that I am now watching this topic. So um, I didn't have to do anything. It uh, was all automatic. So. If I come over here as this user and create another assessment, um, I don't know, this is um, You'll see that this user is also now watching the topic. And hopefully, if my connection to AWS work is still going, um, if, yeah, I got a notification as Jay Barnett that a new assessment was added. So I got notified that um, uh, that there was an update to this topic. Um, so this is this is on by default for everybody, but um, you, you can configure it in your profile. There's a settings, new settings option for automatically watch topic on interaction. But um, if you turn this off, then uh, you'll have to manually click the watch topic icon to to actually start watching it, but I, this is enabled for everybody uh, by default. So hopefully it'll get a little more interaction, um, a little more um, you know, notifications going on uh, when topics are updated. So that way people can be informed about changes that are going on in AKB. James, can you comment on my assessments? 
<laughs> Do you <laughs> have assessments? <laughs> oh, dang. <Positive> School. <laughs> This, I, I was demo, demoing this locally, but it, this feature is live. It's been live for about a week, I think. So um, uh, I just didn't want to create junk data on Pro or Prod. So I like all of the, the options to toggle things. I think reinforcing that is really nice because, you know, everybody likes choices and what they get notified about. Super cool. Yeah, we definitely opted for configurability. Um, it, it might get a little unwieldy soon, but we can t tidy that up later. Excellent.